Roger, I'll, I'll start with you. The losses at WeWork, I mean, just the turmoil continues. Well, the thing that really scares me about WeWork is that it could be a trigger of a much larger set of issues in the market because their primary funder is SoftBank. And SoftBank is global. It is huge. And the scale of investing it did in unicorns that were, I think, at best unproven uh, and maybe at worst not real businesses uh, is such that as that stuff implodes, it could take SoftBank with it. And SoftBank's big enough to trigger all kinds well, of well, issues Well, let's just, for, let's, you, you know, you're scaring people there saying could take SoftBank with <laughs> it. Significant losses, no doubt, Roger, no doubt. Um, uh, but that's a few steps down the road. But they have $100 billion. In the with, Vision Fund. In the Vision not Fund. Not all theirs. The Saudis are $45 billion in, $27 billion, which is equity, $18 billion, which is debt. They're getting the 7% preferred return. Okay. Um, and then other investors. It's not clearly no, no. SoftBank at risk here in the way you I'm just posited. I'm not talking about SoftBank being at risk. I'm saying if they blow through enough money, right, it signals a fundamental change in how we perceive the new things going on in the economy. Well, the Vision Fund great was a fundamental change in how we go about investing and, in and these things. And if it turns out to be nonsense, which is the way it looks to me at the moment, it has significant implications and, because if right. everybody loses billions... But that's billions not taking from, SoftBank down, Roger which is what you said. Roger also hasn't mentioned that WeWork controls a lot of real estate. And if they're forced to suddenly get out of it, all these leases are underwater. You have a huge amount of space. Drive down the real estate market. Folks in New yeah. York are already worried about it in the real estate market. So if you're looking for systemic risk to scare people, you can bring that into your argument, Exactly. Too. And if you don't want to look at it, don't look at SoftBank <laughs> and do not look at WeWork. Well, I mean, or you could say that the public markets have kind of created a firebreak here, and yes. it could have perhaps infected uh, a broader mm -hmm. uh, part of the markets, but it didn't. No, Mike, I think that's a super important point. The public markets showed fantastic discipline on these things here, and I think that the challenge is that WeWork's not the end of the queue of people looking for liquidity. And it's quite possible the public market's just going to sit there and go, no mas, and just leave them all waiting at the door there. Yeah. I there mean, are listen, some this good is companies that are profitable. For certain. Airbnb for certain. And others. Without a doubt. And SoftBank has made some very good investments along the way. You know, what I'm always interested in, Henry, is SoftBank's willingness to fund competitors of their invest. I mean, companies have already invested billions in DoorDash, Uber Eats, for example. They're a huge investor in Uber, as you know. And yet they're throwing money at DoorDash, which is killing Uber on the Uber Eats part. Didi as well. Same story. That's right. And Does that make sense to, to you? Very, no, they used to be very focused on, look, we've got to avoid conflicts, conflict of interest. So but now it's all about optionality. Right, exactly. I mean, David, the, the, the thing here is the cost of launching these businesses is now incredibly low. And so once they get traction, then you just throw money at it. And so the notion is you throw money at everything against traction because the belief that they have, and I really give the Andreessen Horowitz guys a lot of credit and, and Reed Hoffman for making this part of the, the just general view, philosophy of investing, that once you hit a certain scale, even if your model doesn't work, you can always shrink to something that does. And I think the challenge with some of these is that these models may not work at any scale. Well, we work sort of going through that process right now, right? It's it's looking to siphon off or cut off, you know, spin off the businesses that are not core, and you know, and get out of the markets that haven't that don't look like they could be profitable. You don't think that could happen for WeWork? Oh, it, it may. I don't know. But what I do know is that a lot of people can do what WeWork is doing right now, many yeah. of whom are far better capitalized and they have much better positions. I mean, if you are a New York real estate person, you have a lot of empty space that you can turn into into uh, shared working spaces to compete with these guys at the margin without taking anything like the Are risk. you implying the right things? They're, they're going back to the core yeah. business, cool offices. We're a customer. We're happy. We're ha also happy because, you know, it's not all that expensive, the space, which may be part of the issue. But it's great to work with them. If they focus on just that business, yes, there ought to be a business. You find that you've been more productive and more efficient Everyone's as a result happier. of the space? We feel so cool when we walk in. Everyone's excited. How's the coffee? <laughs> Is the coffee good? It was good, yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. So, Roger, I mean, going back to the point that Mike just made. I'm, if you look at sort of, if you look at a sell-off we've seen in publicly traded companies that went, uh, that came to market this year, um, many of them 
growing revenue very strongly, but not profitable, at least for the next couple of years. It seems like those losses really accelerated on the heels of everything that we saw happen with WeWork as it was as it was trying to go public, too. And I wonder how much you think that's cast a shadow on investors and whether it sort of marks a turning point. What I'm worried about is that a lot of these companies depend on the business of each other for success. That, you know, WeWork is really, at least in its early days, was heavily dependent on startups as a concept. And other startups are supporting other startups. So if you get a problem in one place, the opportunity for ripple effect is pretty significant. So if these, all of these guys don't get public, that is going to have some implications for somebody. And I'm not sure where that shows up first. But at the end of the day, I'm with Henry on this thing, that... There are some really great ideas that have been funded that were encouraged to grow wildly too rapidly, to take way, way too much capital. And while they still have capital, they should retrench and make it work on the capital that they have, because it's not like there's going to be a competitor. There is like zero chance of something coming in after these guys. You don't have to worry about a competitive threat in that way, the way you might have, uh, say, two or three years ago when it appeared that the sky was the limit. All right, so we've just talked about shared office space. We've just touched on deliveries. I mean, is there is there a greater valuation reckoning coming for, coming for some of these other new emerging companies, areas? I think so. I think you've seen it with, with many, not just WeWork, which, again, salute to the public market. My goodness, just blocking it flat out. It's true. I can't remember seeing that before. It's great. But I think you see the I can't remember us spending more time on a private company, by the way, in all my years here, talking about a private company more <laughs> but, but than David, WeWork. This is why we've had the conversation earlier. There are systemic things that WeWork touches that we have to be careful about because the knock-on effects of them retrenching yeah, but we'll they're still like 2% of the real estate market or 3%. Roger, you really do want to scare people this morning, don't you? You got SoftBank collapsing. You got it's the New York real estate know, market it's, collapsing. It's November and it's freezing outside, David. I mean, that's, what can I tell you? I'm from California, you know? It's just upsetting you, I guess. We got, we got some weather. heat in here, I'll say. Yeah. yeah.